it's been 80 years. Oh, it's good to be back. Steve, you're back. It's been so long. Yeah, well, I'm part of the worst ending in the MCU, apparently, so. God, okay, I don't even want (laughs) to open that floodgate. But yeah, we're back. It's been... Two weeks. A long, long time. I don't know the words. I haven't <laughs> felt like this, my dear, since can't remember when it's been a long, long time. Good job. We are an unusual couple, you know. So we're back. We are back. And um, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. <laughs> back streets, back all right. Dun, How many dun, songs can we come dun, up with? Dun, that's basically what this should be called. <laughs> Song roulette. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about. We've been busy. We've got a whole piece of paper. We've been busy the past two weeks, kind of going on tour across the country is what I said. We went to California, Florida. and then we went to Florida, and then we went to South Carolina. Yeah. Beaches, theme parks, driving, and flying. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, a lot of stuff happened in the MCU. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to to catch up about. We're going to start with the one we want to talk about the least, probably, I'd say. Just because it's been a while. It's been a while, and also, do we really care that much? Eh. I care, but like it's old news at this point. Loki finale. We enjoyed it. If you caught our live stream, or Mm -hmm. if you saw, I post our reactions on my TikTok, which you guys probably saw. They did really well. Yeah. I miss, I need to start doing those more. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard because it's already there. Yeah. They always do well. Yeah. But, um, so let's see. To recap, Kang is Kang exists, but mm-hmm. then he died, but he's back, um, just like we are. And um, Loki kissed himself. Yeah, he's in love with himself. And he betrayed himself. Yeah, and a lot of people Loki say that he's... Me. A lot of people say that he's... Um, Self-cessed. Yes. Incest, but with yep. yourself. Um. And then now, I guess, is he in like a different timeline, would you say? Well, I want to start by saying I actually really liked it. I feel like we're coming across negative to it. I really liked it, honestly. Oh, we did really like yeah. it. It's just, it happened. It's like just two kind weeks of ago. like, it's not nauseating to talk about at this point, but borderline nauseating just because we have talked, we've done, we've just talked about it a lot. I'll say, yes, at the end, there's a multiverse set off. Yeah. And because of that, we get to see Loki Finally. in. A Planet of the Apes-esque ending from 1968 where basically Loki, he goes up to Mobius and he's like, who are you? I don't know what he says. I don't remember the dialogue at this point. He Mobius goes, who is are like, you? What, what, who are you? And then he's like, great he like waves in the background. My, my crazy. slight hot take is that the fact that the multiverse now is actually legit set off feels underwhelming to me because this is like the third time that this has happened. Air quotes. Because we thought it happened with Wanda, didn't. We thought it happened in episode two, didn't. And now it's happened, which is great. Well, yeah. it's not great, but <laughs> now it's, it's happened. A, yeah, I'm excited. It's just, but it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, finally. It's, about, it's about damn time. You've That's tricked a quote me from enough. Yeah, uh, it's finally set off. Kang is there. I don't know if Kang's gonna be as big and bad as everyone's saying. I don't. I don't think he will be. I think that he's going to be a great presence for the MCU. He's not the next Thanos, and I think that's Fair. kind of embarrassing to say. Fair. We'll see. I mean, only time will tell. Only time will tell. For all time. Always. But great. that's enough about Loki. I don't Honestly. really want to talk about it anymore. I want to talk about. A lot of things that have happened in the MCU. Do you want to and talk something about... that's not written on this piece of paper? I would like to talk about um, at some point is the Noah Helm speculation. Okay, yeah, we'll get yeah, there. We'll get there. Um, but honestly, let's talk about what's happening. One of those two for me. Let's talk for before we get into what's happening with the MCU. Let's talk about what's happening, like outside of the universe, yeah. but what's happening within the Marvel fandom. Yes. If you guys missed it, ScarJo is suing Disney. Yeah crazy because she's suing disney Disney, disney's being a brat about it yeah and feige sides with yeah kevin feige is like embarrassed but the reason being my interpretation is she her original deal contract with do you want me to explain it sure um (laughs) let me can i mansplain it for you real quick yeah mansplain it um it's basically ScarJo and her team when they originally signed their contract with disney for the black widow movie the contract said that it would be an exclusively theatrical release meaning that it would only the movie would only be released in theaters like no matter what only be released in theaters nowhere else great and then obviously that contract was signed before covid so then covid happened all this stuff um 
But there's an email included in her lawsuit from a high up executive at Disney dated around March. So around the when we March of 2020, when we knew no 2021, when we knew that Black Widow had gotten pushed back again, but we didn't know the date yet when it was coming out. And we did not know if it would be released on Disney Plus yet at that time in March. The email is basically the dude. And he's like, as of right now, the contract stands at what it is still theatrical release only. Um, but we are well aware that if any of that changes, we will need to get in contact with you to renegotiate the deal. Literally, that is an email that Scarlett's team received from Disney. And then Marvel announces the movie's coming out July 9th in theaters and on Disney+. And so Scarlett's team reaches out to Disney and they're like, hey, this is news. We need to renegotiate the deal because Scar- the deal was is that like all basically all of Scarlett's revenue was like purely based in box office income and releasing that on Disney Plus obviously heavily affects the box office income. So she lost out on like $50 million. So so that's why she's suing. And so Scarlett's team reached out to Disney to renegotiate her deal and they were non-responsive. They didn't respond to her at all. Yeah, it's pretty tragic that this is happening just because she should be making a lot more money for the movie. And it actually has opened the floodgate to a bunch of other actresses coming out, notably yeah. Emma Stone for Cruella. And I think Emily Blunt for Jungle Cruise is looking into it, I read. Yeah. Um, and that's just going to open the floodgate for a bunch of things. And I think it's going to effectively shut down Disney Plus premiere access. I think that it's I think it's, it's no more after Jungle Cruise, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just in, it's embarrassing for Disney because like Gal Gadot was compensated for Wonder Woman 84 being yeah. released both on um, both ways. Like every other studio has compensated their actors and actresses, mm-hmm. but Disney hasn't. And Disney is the biggest company. So this is literally just embarrassing for Disney. Honestly, so it is. What do you, and the fact that Feige as well even came out and said, this is a gross mistreatment or something. Yeah. He said, I don't know exactly what he said, but he was in, he was defending Scarlet. He, he was, he was embarrassed by Disney's response. So basically Disney responded to Scarlet suing them and their, their public response was basically, trying to frame it as scarlet being insensitive to the events of covid they're they're basically like you like you're being so inconsiderate to the fact that covid is a deadly disease and they're basically just trying to make it seem like scarlet is a bad person for just being like oh like covid or not covid like you should have given me like my money um but it didn't work everyone's like no a deal like a contract is a contract a deal is a deal disney stop being a brat like we, we know that they've lost a lot of money because of COVID, like Disney I, has. I think but they'll be okay. If I, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah. It's not like they have the Disney parks I know anything, which S- I know they lost money from. Scarlett's but, like yeah. a millionaire. Like, we know Scarlett doesn't necessarily need any more money because she's already made, like, what was she, the highest paying actress in, like, 2019 or something? Like, well, currently, just in general. Yeah. So we know <laughs> we know Scarlett doesn't need any money. Yeah. But neither does Disney. And so it's kind of like the lesser of two evils here. And the reason why I think everyone's siding with Scarlett regardless of the fact that Scarlett really does not need any more money. It's it's the principle of the thing. If Disney's willing to do this to somebody as big and as important to them as Scarlett Johansson, who else are they doing this to? And I don't think this just affects Scarlett's contract. Like, I don't think it just affects Scarlett. I think it affects the contract of, like, a lot of people, like the producers and, like, everyone who gets paid based off of box office revenue. Like, it has to affect them as well. Yeah, I think most of the people who get that is really only – the front and center talent just from my interpretation of it i think everyone else is more I'm just so saying, on like, like, the contract, i think i think it's but, still a big thing though like yes it's effect i think it yeah. it stands for like smaller actors and stuff and she's obviously starting a movement with emma stone and emily blunt i like yeah i um 100 percent on star yeah. side which is a sentence they're, i'm not sure i ever all, thought i would say <laughs> i mean they're all fighting millions with millions at this point, so I don't yeah. care what they do. They're, I'll never have that kind of money. So It's just funny because everyone is so against Disney. Like, I've, a lot of people will hate ScarJo just for everything that she's, like, done or said or whatever, but everyone is still, like, on her side. You know that uh, that that video from Paul Rudd's uh, Hot Ones where he's like, yeah. look at us, look at us. Who would have thought? Not, Not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw people tweeting that and being like, um me who like rags on scarjo every day now <laughs> taking her side <laughs> yeah i thought that was funny. funny yeah um so that's what's happening outside of the M- marvel cinematic universe yeah with regard to black widow though fun fact oh. i think it's coming out on blu-ray in september september or october but i think 
the slipcover looks pretty cool. This is just my little two cents about it. I think it's like the original poster of her with her walk. It's in the black suit. Ooh. You got the widow logo and it's a black slipcover. I haven't seen the steel. Is it a book. black silhouette of her? Or is it just I'll her try and pull suit? it up right now and then we can talk about some other things surrounding a character from Black Widow maybe being in a TV show. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, to fill time while Chris does that, completely off topic of Marvel, um, on our vacations, you guys know I got super sunburnt um, when, well, actually, I don't know. If you follow me, you know I got super sunburnt when we were down in Florida because we went to Disney. Um, also, shout out to Bestie, our bestie, Nicole, who got us into Disney in the first place. Oh, Love yeah, you. for sure. Um, but, She's the best. Uh, so I got really sunburnt when I was at Disney because I didn't put on any sunscreen. I just didn't think about it. And then we went to the beach like the next week, got 10 times more sunburnt. I have – my sunburn's kind of gone now. Like I'm not in pain or anything, but I think I have about 20 different tan lines happening all around my body. It's really bad. Like my chest probably has about five different tan lines going on. It's really, really bad. I got burnt like that last summer when i was on the floating on the river with my friends for three hours and my skin had some weird tan texture to it for a few months so well it's not even it's not a texture it's, it's like, not even a texture thing like i'm i'm silky as a baby not texture butt. but just appearance is what i meant yeah i just i look like i have a skin skin deformity or something because of my weird pale like i'm super pale so where i'm not pale it's really obvious that's a nice slip yeah i like that that's good yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. But I anyway. hope the the Blu-ray is like black, red or something. I hope That'd the steelbook cool. is what you meant. No, like you know how you have like the Ant Man one that you have. Yeah, I know uh, the Ant Man one's black. Age of Ultron's red. That's what I meant. Yeah, so very very cool. But I know a character from Blackwell that's taken the world by storm named Yelena, who uh, is going to be in a little TV show that may or may not have gotten a release date. Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawkeye is coming to us November twenty fourth. Five days before my birthday. Mm. I know you were talking about how everyone. Yeah, was... <laughs> I posted a video about, like, I posted a TikTok about, like, hey, it's coming out November twenty fourth. Almost every comment. Hey, that's my birthday. Hey, that's right before my birthday. Hey, that's right after my birthday. Why are you all born in November? Like the last week. November supremacy, I guess. What's What's <laughs> nine months before November? I think it's February. <laughs> Wait, for real? Is it two plus nine is eleven? Yeah, February. That's so funny. <laughs> that, that makes Valentine's sense. Valentine's babies. That makes sense too. Yeah. Because Valentine's Day is the 14th, so that's like halfway through the month. So that's about like nine oh months and give or, take a, give or take a week for people that are late. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I've known. <laughs> My birthday's in December, so what the fuck is in March? St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. I don't want to get personal on here. <laughs> Are you about to ask me what my parents' anniversary is? No. Their anniversary is in April. I've, I'm a random baby. You are. There was no yeah. call, no rhyme the or reason. Birthdays, maybe? My oh, <laughs> No, that would make me 10 months. My oh, mom's yeah. birthday is March 1st. You're supposed to be due on Christmas Day, though. Yeah, but still, it was only two days I don't late. Know. Anyway. Anyway, change the topic. Let's mom, on, if you're listening, mom, if you're Dear listening, God, anyway. I love you, mom. Um, but anyways, yeah, Hawkeye <laughs> is coming on November 24th. I'm so excited. What I'm not necessarily excited for, just because I'm a brat and am selfish, is I'm not ready for people to react to Kate Bishop the same way that they reacted to Yelena. Else. No, okay. I'm not ready for people to be as obsessed with her as they were with Yelena. I'm hoping maybe mm-hmm. Yelena being there will distract them. May I ask why? Because it's annoying. She's mine. She's not. Yeah, she is. So you're so two things are happening here on this podcast that are gonna get clipped. One, you have disassociated yourself from that man right there and there. Hey, whoa, whoa, so whoa, if, whoa, if, whoa, if, whoa, if Kate whoa. Bishop's yours, Bucky's not yours. Whoa, I can have two. <laughs> Since when? Are you in a polygamous relationship now? Yeah. So you're married to both of them. Yes. I think she's cheating on Bucky. Uh-uh. Hashtag, hashtag watch if you're watching your mouth. Version. Watch your hashtag mouth. Bucky is for the boys. <laughs> hashtag Bucky is for the boys. That's get the out thing. of my fucking house. That's the name of this. Get that's the name of, of this podcast. Get out of my house. <laughs> Literally, get out of my house. Name of this podcast. Tell me Bucky wh- for the boys. When the fu- <laughs> tell me one thing. Tell me one thing about Bucky Barnes right now. Uh, that's James, not obvious. James Buchanan Barnes. He was on a train. Mm-mm. Far, far something away. Something that's not in the movie. So, something about him that's not in the movie. Mm-hmm. He's got a cat named Alpine. Named what? Alpine. Okay. Well, you only know that because of me. No. 
Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. No. You know, I've read the. Have you read the? <laughs> I'm kidding. I was. About, I have never read a comic. That's why I said that. I was gonna say, have you read the uh, Winter Soldier comics? Because I don't. I think have. You... <laughs> They're right behind me, actually. <laughs> I was just. I have, I was just I have the whole Winter Soldier collection, and I have the first Falcon and Winter Soldier comic. Let you go. Make me proud every day. Thank um, you. but all jokes aside, I don't. I think it's cool that a bunch of people are gonna like the no, new character. No, it is. It is. It's cool. It's just. I mean, listen. You you have to admit, and this is coming from somebody who, Yelena became one of like my top five favorite characters after the movie like you have to admit everyone being obsessed with elena was a little annoying like and this is coming from somebody who is one of those people like it's it was it's a lot more so for you because you're on that side of tiktok there's no secret you're on the like i'm on the annoying side of tiktok i'm on the worst side for me it's just like people like elena and they just talk every video on my for you page either makes me laugh or it, it enrages me I'm on the worst side of TikTok and I don't know how to get off of it. I hit not interested every time I see a video that makes me mad and it doesn't work. It's all a scam. It's all a scam. Um, but it's the government. No, I don't know. <laughs> another character that's going to be in Hawkeye is Hawkeye. Right? Hawkeye, yeah, Clint Barton. And I'm actually excited to see him. I'm ex- I mean, I'm not, I'm not like thrilled, but I'm not annoyed. You know what I mean? I'm not like dying to, I, yeah, but I'm, I'm not. Like- I'm not like anti it. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna say Which is I'm shocking excited. For some to believe. For some people on the internet may think you. People <laughs> are so silly. They think that I hate Hawkeye with every fiber of my being. First of all, if I hate a Marvel character, it's War Machine. Second of all, I don't hate Hawkeye. He's just like my least favorite. The best way I can describe him is if he if he's there, I don't really mind him. But if he's gone, I don't miss him. Fair. What Fair. is annoying is Hawkeye this, stands. I was going to say, I think the reason that you have gotten that reputation is because, because of, of Clint Stings. Because of Clint Stings, 100%. <laughs> we explain it every time, and just no one ever listens. They're they're like, why are you, you hate Clint? Your name is Clint Stinks. And we're like, oh, yeah, no, we don't actually hate him. It's just an inside joke. Well, then why are you named Clint Stinks? It's an inside joke. I just told you that. What do yeah, you mean? Totally fair. Um, I But when it comes to Hawkeye, I think... I think that Clint's going to be... Maybe we just think Clint is smelly. It's <laughs> a good one. That word's also weird. Smelly. Smelly. Stinky. That one's worse. Stinky. I don't, I don't, Stinky. I don't like smelly. Um, regardless, I think that from what I saw, didn't Jeremy Renner say that like the relationship between the two of them in the show is like she's a fanatic of Hawkeye? Yeah, she's a Hawkeye stan. It's the one thing about her that we don't have in common. Everything else. So I'm so happy they made her 22 in the show. I'm. I feel like I'm about to relate I, to her so hardcore. It's gonna be ridiculous. You definitely could, but I want you to understand and have this revelation on camera for the people that you have been cosplaying as a Hawkeye stand. <laughs> oh, listen. You know, like the actual truth is that I really do like Hawkeye in Avengers and in Age of Ultron. I think he's cool, End and I think he's too. funny. Ronan. Mm, people. I can't honestly, look at him with a mohawk. I'm going there. I can't look at him with a mohawk. I'm going there. I think. Where that are you going? I'm going to Vormir in Endgame right now. What? Vormir? You know, the do- planet I know. Where... What, are you, what are you trying to say to me? What are you saying? <laughs> are you trying to come up with a metaphor? You've no. lost me. Oh, I was going to say, is there not controversy right now about people, Nat, should have, about how Clint should have died? And Nat and that? I was going to go people, there. A lot of people, yeah, there's, I mean, that's been a thing since Endgame. I know. A lot of people think that. I don't think that. I think that Natasha dying was far more moving than Clint would have been. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, I, I think I'm glad that, and I that think Hawkeye it, lived. And I think people disagree as well. It makes, with that. yeah, it's it's more impactful that Nat died because she spent the past five years, like, doing everything. Like, she's the one that held down the fort for five years. And she's the one that did everything she could to make sure that everybody could come back and be back together. So it's just, like, depressingly metaphorical that she's the only one that well not the only one because tony wasn't there but well i guess he was there she says see you in a few or see you in a minute see you in a minute see you in a minute yeah we didn't damn we saw her in a two hour and 12 minute film that she was underpaid for though so true (laughs) but hawkeye's gonna be badass and honestly i think elena's gonna steal the show and i know that's what she's kind of got a reputation for doing i think she's gonna steal it you don't kate's gonna steal it elena dude i don't think Elena's Elena's gonna steal it no because kate's gonna be in the show far more than her and it's Haley. I get that, but like honestly, I need to just come clean here. I think that this pre-conceived hype for Kate. 
Kate Bishop is like a little whoa, too much for, like, from me, n- from everyone, including you. Whoa, I, I, whoa, whoa! I think whoa, I think whoa. she's going to be a cool character. Whoa! It's not called. Listen to me. Well, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was Falcon was first, so it was more about him. It's called Hawkeye. It's not called Kate Bishop. People, you understand that Kate Bishop is Hawkeye, like in the comics. Oh, I, I she fully understand. Hawkeye. But who's Hawkeye right now? The main Hawkeye. Last time I checked, he was Ronan. Incorrect. Nope. Correct, he actually. Was, yeah, last time I checked, he was Ronan. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked. He was Ronan when he was out there killing people, and then right when Nat came back, he was Hawkeye again. Mm. Here's the thing. I, I don't care. Here's the thing. It's going to be a passing of the torch. I think this show will end with Hawkeye's retirement. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be in the MCU again, period. I do not think he will. Yeah. Maybe in, like, one scene. But I still think Kate Bishop's going to be sick, but, like, if it wasn't Haley Steinfeld, would the hype be there? Yes. Really? Yes. So if it was Anna Kendrick? Yes. So I'm just naming actresses. If it was, you're uh, just saying that because of Pitch Perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was like, yeah, good luck naming another brunette actress. If it was Anne Hathaway and this was in 2012, <laughs> I'm just because that's when she played Catwoman. That's when she played Catwoman. Um, I don't know. I, I just I am excited to see Kate Bishop. Now people are going to think I'm being the negative Marvel <laughs> guy, but it's just I don't know. We 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 haven't seen. I think I think girls always just get very excited when a new female character is going to be introduced because yeah. we're limited. We're not necessarily limited on female characters, but we're limited on cool female characters. Like, yeah, sure, Jane exists. You don't like a psychotic person who holds an entire ho- town hostage and is tried to made the hero- be made the hero? No. Oh man. Sure, Jane Jane exists, right? <laughs> but like, you know, eh, at least not until Thor: Love and Thunder. Try and think of what other females exist Hope. hope's underrated because she doesn't have a is pretty cool yeah like we've got cool females but like pepper waiting for that like i'm waiting for them to do something with them you know what i mean yeah yelena's the future yelena i think she's gonna get her own show mm-hmm. i do i don't know if she's gonna get a show what would the show be about well that's yet to be seen <laughs> <laughs> it could be hawkeye season two it could be her and hawkeye with a new hawkeye Kate Bishop. Yeah. We'll As she should. Though. I'm so happy that they're making her 22. You know, you're talking about, yeah, that's that's good. That's good for everyone because that's, well, when the show comes out, I'll be, second episode, I'll be 22. <gasps> By the end of it, you'll be 22. So true. But you know who else is a young female character in the MCU that's coming is Miss Marvel and we don't have shit about this show yet. Nothing. Do you think it, you th- we actually disagree on I'm this. Gonna, you think I it have comes a theory. out. Yeah. When do you think Miss Marvel First, comes out? I think it comes out in October. When do you think it comes out? And then I'll give my pitch. I think it comes out 2022. Here's no my specific pitch. month. So what if it comes out August 11th? 30 minute episodes, 10 episodes. If it were to do one a week, which I don't think it will, but if it were to do one a week starting August 11th, mm-hmm. it would end October 13th. All right. Mm-hmm. If and and Hawkeye is November 24th. So if they were to just drop. The first two episodes of What If on the first day, which I think they will, because they did that with Monsters at Work. They've done it with multiple. They did it with WandaVision. Yeah. I think they'll do that. They'll drop the first two on the same day. The show would end, What If would go from August 11th to October 6th. One week after that, they're not going to have a making of What If. They're just not going to, in my opinion. It's no, an no, probably it, It's animated. So what they would do is they would start Miss Marvel on October 13th. There's six episodes, and that would end on November 17th, and then you would go straight into Hawkeye. No. And why do you disagree? First of all, why would they announce, why would they give us the Hawkeye date if Ms. Marvel comes out first? They would advertise Ms. Marvel first if they, if it was coming out first. Second of all, the Entertainment Weekly article literally said that Hawkeye is going to be the next live action Disney Plus show for Marvel. Third of all. Is Entertainment Weekly Kevin Feige? You're always the person that says it has to come from Feige's mouth. Entertainment Weekly is like. It's Kevin Feige? They released the still. So yeah, pretty much. Hawkeye wrapped on filming far before Ms. Marvel did. And Ms. Marvel is going to have a much harder time in post-production because I'm not quite up to speed on Ms. Marvel and everything she does, but like she like stretches or something, kinda like Elastigirl, I'd say. I know she's like she, I have no idea what she does. I don't really know, but I do know that she requires a lot of CGI and they're gonna have to do that. And if Brie Larson and um, I don't know why I said Brie Larson. If Carol and 
Monica are in the show. Like they're air quote, like they're rumored to be. Like they also require CGI. It's a lot of CGI, a lot of post production. Hawkeye doesn't require that much. And if Miss Marvel wrapped filming after Hawkeye, it's they're gonna it's not gonna be ready by October. The only thing is, why are they not announcing yet that it's coming in 2022? Because there was that announcement that they said their plan to come out both in 2021. And if you go to like IMDb and all these other sources. It says 2021. It's always been planned to come out in 2021. So I don't understand why. Plans change. True. Just announce it then. Damn. I'm sick of Marvel and all their, and like, and like, especially No Way Home. not going to announce anything until they're 100% certain that it's going to come out in 2022. That's fair. They might be, they might be like, oh, if we can get it done by October. Yeah. But they'll probably, Mm -hmm. I think they're going to keep it in 2022. Interestingly, Book of Boba Fett was originally said to come Christmas 2021. I, I can't see them dropping a new Star Wars live action show and Marvel on the same. They could do it at the same time, but one would have to be Friday, one would have to be Wednesday. They can't. They can't keep doing this Wednesday pattern just because Loki did well. It's actually irritating to me. Yeah. Bad batches on Friday. Drop drop one of them on Friday and one on Wednesday because moving forward, when Kenobi and all these Star Wars shows come out and Marvel, if you drop them both on Wednesday, you are screwing yourself for probably the Star Wars market. Um, I think that Marvel. I've always said this. I think Marvel is stupid for changing into only only Wednesdays because, like, a big, big, big percentage of marvel's fan base is in school whether that's middle school high school or college like a big percentage of them especially the ones that keep up with the show as like hardcore as we do are in school no matter what school that is and you think people are going to stay up till three for that no you're not going to see those numbers for loki because loki was a very highly anticipated show and it was dropped in summer the middle of the summer like no one was in school yeah no one was (laughs) in school it was dropped in the middle of the summer so you're not going to see those numbers on a Wednesday during a school year, you're just not. Yeah, it's it's Wednesday is not that guy, pal. Trust me, it's not that guy. <laughs> uh, but I do think that moving some to Friday, like over. I think Star Wars should stay on Friday. Honestly, like Hawkeye being when it is, Wednesday's probably fine. It's like towards the end of the year. Yeah, when is? Um... But Mando and Book of Boba got to be on Friday. And honestly, I saw a pitch. Someone was talking about how we know we know Game of Thrones came out at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock every Sunday night. Mm-hmm. I wish that Disney Plus kind of did that because everyone and their mother would have nothing going on and they would just stop and watch it. They probably are keeping oh, it I think on. You're getting a package. They ooh, it's probably not for me. Oh. They're probably keeping it on Wednesdays for Hawkeye because if it was a Friday, it Black comes Friday. out on, Fridays. Friday is the seventeenth of December. Oh, okay. Sorry, so, I thought you were in November. I was looking no. at twenty four. So that's um. It would have no released on the exact yeah. same day as No Way Home. So that's stupid of them. Yeah, they're, honestly, they're probably stay, now that I think about it, I was. I wasn't thinking at first. If they dropped on Fridays, they would interfere with their with movies. Three of them, pretty much. Yeah. Because so that's m- what. What if is coming on Wednesday? I think. Yeah, and then I think they also changed it to Wednesdays because they know that Star Wars shows are running, and Star Wars shows are running like like Bad Batch is a long, long show. So yeah, it's got only two episodes left. That's wild. Like I've been watching it. Yeah, but the thing is, I do think Star Wars will stick to Friday. Because they don't have any Star Wars movies planned until like Star late Wars. Next year. Star Wars needs the Fridays, if I'm being honest. Because imagine if the Star Wars was on Wednesday That's and what I was Marvel was earlier. on Friday. Yeah, like it would just delineate the market for Star Wars. It yeah. would basically like, I'm sorry, but the only show from Star Wars that's going to do well shatter pretty much jokingly and make all these Marvel numbers look like playground numbers is Obi Wan. And I don't think there's an argument to be made. Like yeah. you have to agree. Yeah. Like Obi Wan Kenobi, that trailer. Whew, Qui-Gon, Darth Vader, Qui-Gon Obi-Wan. Bay. It's going to be amazing. But um, Speaking of shows, speaking of shows that drop, Outer Banks Season 2 came out yesterday. We watched it all. We watched it all in one day. <laughs> I'm proud um, that I made it through because I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. And you, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's, I wouldn't have watched 10 episodes with you. Yeah, it's better than Season 1. If I'm gonna be honest, if you want to, if you watch it and you want to see my reaction to like things, should we get? We'll go. Should we get in spoilers next podcast episode? Give people a week to watch it. Maybe yes, yeah. Next next week. podcast episode, we'll talk about Outer Banks spoilers. But if you want to see my reaction to things that happened in the show, I like recorded my reaction. Obviously, spoilerful. Um, that's on my YouTube. You can go watch that. Uh, but all I'm gonna say about it is, great show. If you look at me in the eyes, if you're watching at home or if you're listening, 
listen with your ears. If you don't watch Outer Banks, if you like, if you don't want to watch Outer Banks because the hype for it was so big last summer, I was like that. I didn't watch it until like December. If you don't want to watch Outer Banks because, oh, you think it's just like a silly teenage show, like you don't want to watch it, you think it's stupid, change your attitude right now. Watch the show. You will not regret it. Chris here hates cliches. We're going to talk about how much he hates cliches in a few seconds. Correct. Hates cliches. I think I think you're not the biggest fan of teenagey things, right? It just depends. And he loves the show. Give it a chance. Especially to get to season two. Oh my God, please. I'm begging you to give it a chance. Here's my pitch for the people like me out there who... Skeptics. Who Not skeptics. People who like to see like super good well well written well produced all these different things in shows and movies i don't go into this expecting breaking bad or game of thrones it's it's or even stranger things it's completely different it's cheesy but i think it understands that it's and i think that it's entertaining as hell is there there's obviously a lot of stupid things that happen in this show sure they're either unbelievable or just characters are, are stupid and even some things that happen are like, but how is that person a lot? Like things like that. But you it's know what fun. I mean? But it's so much fun. I genuinely just enjoy it. And it's not like I critique movies for being stupid, but for TV shows, it's like something charming about it. Unlike some of those stupid movies, like this has a charm to it. It's got like a coming of age vibe with I'd these kids say, hanging out. It's it's very you know what I'd say coming of age, and that's why I'd I like describe it. it as a as Scooby Doo meets National Treasure. That's a pretty good pitch with a little bit of like high school movies yeah. for example like Daisy confused like yeah. super rad like that like hang out vibe. yes hang out bestie vibes yes woogity, woogity, woogity. and there's a lot of stupid drama that honestly it's just i want to eat it's popcorn and watch it. it's, it's entertaining. so entertaining it's great yeah just don't take it so seriously in season two like it doesn't it doesn't even take itself seriously no, so that's exactly. why that's why it's so good it's self-aware same reason why the first twilight movie is good because it's self-aware and it doesn't take itself seriously facts i love the show i think you should all watch it it's great it's a solid show. I honestly recommend giving it a shot if you are a skeptic of it. I really do. I'm also in love with Madeline Klein. So fair. So girl that plays Sarah I, Cameron. I approve her to be Spider Gwen if they a go million down. percent. She's yeah. my fan cast for Spider Gwen. I will not accept anybody else. Yeah, I mean, I unless Emma Stone wants to come back and she's older, that would be dope. But hey, yeah, I guess she's probably moved on. Yeah, maybe she doesn't want to work with Disney because they don't pay apparently. But I'm, not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, talking about another actress that sued Disney, Emily Blunt is in. Jungle Cruise, which we saw Thursday. Yes, we saw Jungle Cruise. Uh, we reviewed it kind of on Chris's channel. We did like a vlog thing. So you can watch that there to really see our in-depth. Yeah. Someone commented something funny. I want to bring it up on the review. We kind of disagreed on our on our reviews. We definitely movie. disagreed. I loved it. I thought it was great. It's not necessarily a movie I have a burning desire to rewatch, but I really enjoyed it. And I was entertained literally the whole time. Chris yeah. didn't like it as much as I did. Um, no, I thought that it was just like, fine. It was the definition of 50, 50 percent middle of the road movie. Genuinely just like it exists. There's entertainment to be had. There's some fun adventure vibes. There's my least favorite movie cliche of all time that I honestly can be unforgivable happens at least three times in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um. Can we talk about spoilers? No, I don't know. Damn. Um, I will say someone commented, gasp, they actually <gasps> disagree about something for once. And I didn't respond this, but I wanted to say, damn, you must be new here. <laughs> I was going to say, if only you could see our relationship quite literally every day. You must day. have never watched this podcast. No, oh, for real. Or ever actually watched a video for that matter. I'd say it's more rare when we do agree, maybe. We agree on a lot of movies, like like Spiral and stuff, but our scores are different. And like as time goes by, we genuinely disagree on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like we... I'm pretty sure our rankings of the MCU are vastly different. We should make that. We need to make an updated one. I think they're yeah. vastly different. Do you? I really do. What's your top three? Well, top five. Top five has the original Iron Man in it. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and it has um, Endgame, Infinity War, yeah, yeah. Iron Man, no. um, Civil War, I think. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think... I think I'm just going to say it. I think Guardians of the Galaxy has popped up into my top five. I'm going to rewatch that soon. I'm confident to say Guardians of the Galaxy is better than Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay. <laughs> it's, I would, if, honestly, I've, I need, you have made it worse for me, not in the sense of I'm 
of I'm scared to say it and admit it. And right. just society and, and film Twitter and YouTube. Captain America, The Winter Soldier is overrated. a good movie that is wildly overrated. Fair. Wildly overrated. I do think it's overrated even though it's my Top favorite. Top 10 MCU, yes. The best Marvel movie, fuck no. Because, That's my yeah, opinion. I mean, I think a lot of things are overrated. I think Thor Ragnarok is also overrated. But Agreed just because, wholeheartedly. Just because something's overrated doesn't mean it's bad. Yes. Just if it's everyone's favorite, that's, you know, like, it's yeah, it's overrated. Yeah. Like, but for example. Revenge of the Sith, overrated. Yes, because people put it as the number one Star Wars movie. Yeah. It's, it's good, but it's not the number one Star Wars movie. Yeah. Honestly, my opinion on that real quick is I think... <laughs> I have to, uh, I'm just going to say it. Fuck it. If your favorite Star Wars movie is outside of the original trilogy, I still respect your opinion. You're allowed to have it. <laughs> I am not attacking you. I promise that. That okay. probably sounded bad at first. I'm, I'm keeping it in. I don't care. It's just, um, I would like to have discussion. Civil. Like, I'm not even, I'm not attacking you. I'm not saying your opinion's invalid. I genuinely would just like to talk. Okay. I know that sounds threatening. I promise you it isn't. You can back, back me up. Come on. Yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> um, it's more so this. I think I'm just gonna break this down. I think the original three films are the best Star Wars movies. That's just my opinion. I grew up loving those the most. I think they're the best made movies. If the sequels are your favorite three, or one of those is your favorite, I think that that's also cool. Like you're still a Star Wars fan. I hate when people say you're not a Star Wars fan because you have this there. I think that there's a fifty fifty or higher shot. You are a little newer to Star Wars. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Because there isn't the attachment and the, oh my gosh, they ruined this for me thing. Yeah. If the prequels are your favorite, I actually think that's pretty dope. I mean, like, that's cool. I, I think Fair. the prequels are overhated. Phantom Menace is a top six Star Wars movie for me. And mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith is top four, by the way. So I'm not like, I know multiple people, uh, close friends of mine, have Revenge of the Sith at their favorite Star Wars movie. And that's awesome. I honestly just like, when I meant comment or like talk to me, I genuinely want to talk about it because I want to break it down. I like I love having topic discussions about what the best Star Wars movie is. But we we're talking about overrated MCU movies for a second there. We were. I think that um I honestly think Black Widow is a little underrated right now. Oh, can I talk about a Pepio I have with Black Widow real quick? Sure. Completely switching topics off of yeah. things being overrated. We don't have to follow um, an outline unless you know the drill. Um I have this pet peeve right now with a lot of videos I've been seeing about Black Widow on my TikTok timeline. Um, it's people who are like, if you think that Black Widow is a bad movie because you think Taskmaster was a bad villain, then you clearly didn't watch the movie because Taskmaster is the victim, not the villain. And I'm like, okay, I still think Dracoff is a bad villain. Dracoff's worse than Taskmaster. <laughs> like, Dracoff wasn't, he didn't do anything besides punch Natasha like twice. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's a bad person. He's trafficking children. Sure, Seven he's a nerd. horrible person. But it's like, uh, he's underwhelming as a villain. Of course he is. He's like a fat, he's some, old white guy. He's some stereotypical old Russian dude that runs essentially like an underground mob thing like we see this in most generic action movies anyway yeah we've we've and... had we've had <laughs> if i had a nickel Natasha. yeah it's like got a nickel for every time that the villain in a marvel movie was an old fat white guy doing something bad then i'd be i'd be rich i'd have all the nickels yeah so many nickels yeah i, I don't need it and i don't want it <laughs> Not saying he was like that's like not saying he's the worst villain, but he wasn't the best either. So I just am getting I'm getting annoyed no. with people being like Taskmaster wasn't the villain. Okay, I still think the villain was bad. No matter who you're gonna make the villain of this movie, I still think the villain was bad. Drakeoff is like you said. You don't think the worst? I think Drakeoff has an argument to be made for the worst MCU villain. No, it's Malekith, but pretty close. Top th top five worst MCU villain, no question. I'll let you have that. No question, in my opinion. I will say... Oh, another thing. People keep saying about Taskmaster, and they're like, when people hate Taskmaster for the same reason they love Bucky, oh my god, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> wait, shut up. Wait, explain this to me. Brainwashed, like, killer, being controlled, whatever. That's not why people hate Taskmaster. So they're already wrong. Yeah, but either way, my point to that is, yeah, of course... We 
care about Bucky. We've seen Bucky before. We've seen the before of Bucky. Yes. And we know what happens to him. So we already have empathy for him. Like we feel bad for him. Yes. We want him to be fixed. We don't know shit about Taskmaster. We didn't even know who Taskmaster was until the end of the movie. <laughs> and then when we find out that it's Dracoff's daughter, like all we've seen of his daughter is the back of her head going upstairs. Yeah. And then she blows up. I don't have, I mean, Nada, <laughs> I was about to say, nothing. I don't have enough sympathy for that, which it makes me sound like a bad person because the poor child got blown wrong, up. though. But like, I haven't, I obviously, I don't know anything about her. I haven't seen enough of her. Like, yes, it sucks that her dad abused her and she's been like basically brainwashed and like trapped inside herself for so long. Obviously, that's horrible. But the truth of the matter is that if you don't have a lot of background on the character, like you're less inclined to care about it that much. Correct. So obviously, I've had a whole movie of Bucky, so I'm going to care more about Bucky when I find out he's a Winter Soldier. Yeah. As opposed to, what is his daughter's name even? Couldn't tell you for money. I couldn't tell you. I actually got into my head. I've seen the movie four I'm times. I'm dying because I haven't. I don't know. I've seen the movie three. I don't know. I don't know. I think Alexi? it starts with an A. Alexis. Alexi is the, is <laughs> right, the dad. Yeah. I know. Which is um, funny because for some reason... um. This is really kind of off topic, but I don't care. When it comes to David Harbour playing Red Guardian, I always think of Stranger Things season three with um, Alexi. Alexi. Yeah, because he's funny. playing like I, that, there's someone's probably made a video about that. Oh, of course, I've seen a yeah. bunch of it. Smear it off. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love that show. But like, it's just annoying. It's like no. First of all, you're right. I don't even know what they mean when they say that we hate Taskmaster for the reasons that we love Bucky. Uh, we don't love Bucky because he's a brainwashed assassin. We don't love Bucky because he's an underdeveloped, shitty villain that we don't know. Um, Taskmaster, on the other hand, we don't know who they are till the end. And the thing is, Taskmaster's a robot. This is Taskmaster. Initiate the Taskmaster protocol. Sitting there like this. Lifeless, no brain, essentially. Just sitting there, brainwashed. It's a bit what Bucky's like, though. A little bit. It's yeah, little. but like... But he's hot. Just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, um, I kind of start to see their point now, but I strongly disagree with it in that sense because Bucky, like you said, we is a human being. We've seen him as a human. And can snap in and out of it. And like even when they snap out of... When the Taskmaster girl, I don't know her name, when she snaps out of it at the end, she's been in that state for so long yeah. that it's like they're too far gone. And, and I just... Here's when you know thing. what Taskmaster is, too, real quick, when you know Taskmaster's abilities and yeah. how cool the character is outside of the MCU, it's disappointing when compared to what we got. And we do know what Bucky's capable of outside of the MCU, and they actually go for it in the MCU, in my opinion. What's annoying for me is um, another thing is when people try and, again, this is going to make me sound like I'm against like women, but I'm not. <laughs> oh but gosh. it's You're a woman. How I you? hate when I hate when they're like, oh, you just hate Taskmaster because they made her a girl. No, no, because they made Carly Morgenthau a girl. Well, that's not the best example, but you know what I mean. It yeah. has nothing to do with the gender of it. It's the it's the fact that what they made Taskmaster isn't even ta like it's not Taskmaster at all. What they could have done is made a completely different new villain. Didn't have to be Taskmaster at all. This villain could have also even had the ability to copy other skills. Like it doesn't have to be named Taskmaster. Just make a cool random new villain that has a mask. And then you reveal at the end that it's Drakov's daughter, and that's dope, but you didn't have to make it Taskmaster because Taskmaster is just a completely different thing. Taskmaster had a family, and every he he has this ability, and every time he uses this ability, he forgets a memory of himself, and he loses his family that way, and he's a far more compelling villain. And that has nothing to do with the fact that it's a boy. Easily could be a girl. But that's not the part, like his gender, the gender of Taskmaster is not what's important what's what makes taskmaster a compelling villain is what happens when they use their ability so you took that away you just you just plucked the part of taskmaster where he just can copy movements and you put it into Drakeoff's daughter yep. and you called that taskmaster and that's not really taskmaster and that's the problem people have with it it had nothing unless they're just misogynistic it had nothing to do with the fact that it was a girl absolutely nothing it had it had to do with the fact that it was Drakeoff's daughter if it was Drakeoff's son it would have been the same thing would have been the same thing Correct. That's my rant. Overall, just... <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> the villains... Ah, I want a good MCU villain in the movie again. We haven't had... Uh, taking Thanos out of the equation, we've had a few. Vulture being the best. Loki being, at this point, what is going on? I mean, like... is he John Walker's good. 
anti he, I, he was not a villain he's more of an anti-hero i'd say yeah. but he's still good yeah i'd say i mean it's just you know like wandavision didn't really have a villain i guess kang is kind of I, kang was awesome in the final episode though i, I don't even it, think yeah. we even talked about that but i love jonathan majors he killed it no yeah he was the best part of the episode the show Steve. the whole episode was this discussion and it's I just him it, so. like he is everything and um i'm it's gonna be exciting for him as an actor he's gonna get to play different versions of kang He's going to get to play a different version of Kang in, yeah. in the next movie we see yeah. in Ant-Man 3, which I think started filming recently. I saw the director put like oh, this yeah. weird bunny on his weird. Instagram, probably like nodding to WandaVision. Just kidding. Weird. <laughs> but um, yeah. Sorry, that was a big rant about. I just, I'm just really sick of, um... no, the way I was going to word that was going to be rude. I take that back. <laughs> um, I just think one of the most defensive Stan fan bases is nat stands and it, i've been getting a lot of like the not the there's normal ones and then there's annoying ones and i've been getting a lot of the annoying ones on my for you page lately hang on one second i'm gonna double check something real quick that was i'm just, leaving that in just to prove that you've done that like three no times. that was just my paranoia <laughs> i was just making sure that it was plugged in every time we you're fine Every time we record it, she's always like, are the mics plugged in? I just wanted to make sure. And, like, literally the mic thing is plugged in right there. Well, one time and one time for your video, it wasn't fully plugged in, though. Do you remember that? Yeah. So I'm paranoid. Fair. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to order something for the mics, maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Why. Oh, God, that was terrible. Why did I just talk like that? What did you do? I talked like a baby. Ew. Don't ever do that again. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get like uh, something to enhance the audio quality, and I'm excited about that. Yeah, that should be fun. Something else we want to do. You want to tell them? I have no idea what you're even talking about, so you can do it. What does PO stand for? Oh! <laughs> I'm generally curious. We're post office? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick. I'm not making Are that Are you up. kidding? No bullshit. I didn't know. Wow. You know what else? I, I thought it stood for like personal order box or something. You know what else Chris has said recently that might be one of the stupidest things he's ever said? What? We were on vacation and he was like, oh, I didn't know that the moon rises. I didn't. You... I thought the moon was just always out. If I drove out right now, sometimes I see the moon at noon. No shit. It's out there and it's blue sky. It's not at noon though. You see it Five. at like. 5 yeah, p.m. Yeah, so when they're. All right. I just, it was the funniest thing ever. He was like, the moon, I, yeah. the moon rises. You're right. People love the moon rises and the moon sets. Well, it does. They're just so beautiful. I know it does, but like, it's kind of, it, it honestly, in concept, irritating, pretentious even. The moon's oh, yeah. kind of, the moon's kind of pretentious. What? The moon, the moon just seems like, you know, like a film, like a film bro, kind of annoying. Like they don't get the attention they always seek. Like they're just annoying. And the sun is just like cool like the sun's the hollywood blockbuster that we all love <laughs> have i lost you a little bit okay i love the moon i want to go to the moon i'm a star guy myself <laughs> um but yeah he was like the moon rises i've had I a lot like, of revelations yeah, no lately shit. yeah you really have like What's i was watching moon? we were watching the bad batch and we were today the episode 14 oh my and we were God. talking about how like hunter is hunter. a hunter because of his abilities and i was just always like i wonder why hunter's name is just like some random average dude's name like hunter because wrecker he's always like a wrecking ball crosshairs the sniper tech is a tech guy and so i was always like hunter and i never really put two and two together till today when he's literally we see his abilities more so than we had in the past and um it was just like oh well i had a few more of those revelations over the week but i don't remember them yeah you have those a lot i feel like yeah it's pretty cool it's precious. Oh. But yeah, uh, we are working on opening a P.O. box. I thought that P.O. boxes were like $10. Turns out they're not. They're like $300 for like six months. Yeah, it depends on what size you get and for how long you get it. It's kind of wild, but get, I think we're going to start one anyway. I think we're going to get the second to smallest, not the smallest, but the next one up. So right in between small and medium. Because here's the thing. I doubt anyone's going to send us anything big. We're really only opening it to get like letters i would say probably yeah or like you, well, you can send you, whatever you want but yeah. yeah i mean yeah but i'm assuming like most people are, would send like letters yeah. or you with you getting blu-rays from people or whatever and isn't it a thing that if you get something in your p.o box and it's too big the post office just holds it 
Yeah. So then what's the point of buying? I guess if you're like really famous, you want a big one so that it yeah. doesn't overflow, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That's, I think that's the case. Yeah. So we don't need, we're, we don't need that big of one. Uh, no, we don't need that at all. But everybody should send us letters. Yeah, for sure. Because it would be cute to read them yes. and I can put them on my wall. And it's very, I know, have... it goes without saying kind words. It's mean always, more than anything. It just puts a smile on your face. Yeah, it I makes have, you want to keep making videos. Um, at my apartment, I have a whole wall of anything I anyone's ever gotten me off of my Amazon wish list. You can leave like notes when you buy things off a wish list, and I have every note from anybody that's ever sent me something, and I have them all taped up on my wall, and I like to read them every once in a while. That's nice. I know that if someone just leaves a nice comment or even goes out on a limb and sends a super chat, that is just one of the coolest things ever. And I just it's hard for me to fathom. Mm -hmm. that people would want to like send a donation to the channel it just genuinely means so much yeah people are nice i enjoy people people are cool not all people are assholes and, not and all there's people. a lot of assholes out there but not everyone is yeah the, so true. driving on the roads begs to differ <laughs> uh, yeah that's a story for another time but yeah you have anything um, else you want to talk about i think we i honestly I, we like to go for like an hour i think we might have hit an hour do you think yeah. I'm trying to think what else has happened to us in the past two weeks we can talk about. Um, I watched a new movie. I watched Seven. What did you think? We did a reaction video. Did a reaction video on Chris's channel. Uh, it was good. It was really good. I am a genius, so I kind of um, guessed the movie because I'm just that smart. Yeah. It's not the best movie ever made because I've seen it twice and people like to claim it as that. I think it's 20 on the IMDb Top 250. Really? Um. It's good, but honestly, if I had watched that movie without knowing anything for the first time, I might have liked it a little more, but I, I still think I would have been able to put my you know, intuition together and figured out some things. Brad Pitt taught. Morgan Freeman is my spirit animal. Brad Pitt is attractive. Uh, you have bashed him in the past, and it's hey, funny whoa, that you've come whoa, full whoa, circle whoa, now. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. go to Twitter? I never bashed him. I just said... I don't know about that. I said that he is not more attractive than Sebastian Stan to me, and that statement still holds, but that does not mean that he is not extremely attractive. Ryan Gosling. I saw a video of Ryan Gosling and Brad Pitt announcing an award, and Ryan Gosling with a beard might be one of the most attractive men in Hollywood. Mm, good for you. Not a Gosling girl? Ryan you know who Ryan Gosling is, right? Ryan Gosling with a beard? I don't know. Have you seen La La Land? Yeah, I have. Does he have a beard in La La Land? Does he? Yes. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's the most attractive man ever. I said one of the most attractive in Hollywood. He's okay. He's good looking. Wow. Well, okay. Owen Wilson. I mean, he's the best, so it doesn't matter. Owen Wilson's the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mobius. We didn't even talk about Jungle Cruise. We switched topics. I don't really want to. We can. Chris didn't like it. I, I mean, like, it. I'm like, I might fall asleep if we sat here and talk about it too long. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just saying, like, it's okay. I know some people love it. I'm not going to ask them. <laughs> you know who it is. You know who loves it. And I love the person who loves it platonically. I'll say his name, um, Trevor. Yeah, he loves it. And that's totally <laughs> cool. I know uh, the movie Geek loves it. I know a bunch of people really like this movie. I think uh, my that's friend Ryan from Nerdy Blurb. Very cool. I'm I'm happy that everyone likes it. I know it's kind of like a mixed movie though. Like you either really enjoy it or you just indifferent and think it's kind of meh, which is where I am. I don't think it's a bad movie. It's just it's there. It's there. Yeah, I'm probably never going to watch it again. And it probably to quote the Jeremy Johns ranking system, I'll forget it in like T minus one week. Like I just dang yeah, it's a bummer. I mean the Rock's good. Emily Blunt's good. Their chemistry is good. Yeah. People are over praising the brother though. My God, he was fine. I thought he was funny. The actor, they're like, that character was so funny. I'm like... I thought he was pretty funny. Yeah. The freaking cheetah or jaguar steals Proxima. the spotlight. I, I can't... I would have. I would fail like an animal species cheetah. test right cheetah now. Cheetah has the print. Jaguars are black. Panthers are black. Jaguars, I think, are also black, though. <laughs> we both grab our phones at the same time to try and prove the other person wrong. Um, jaguar. I know jaguars look like cheetahs. Do they? Maybe I'm Well, stupid. I got the car, so... Yeah, this is a jaguar. What if it was a jaguar? Maybe it was. I think it was a jaguar. Is Proxima? Yeah, it is a jaguar. You're actually right. Ooh, yeah, look, that looks yes, exactly like Proxima. Yes. Yeah, Why are jaguars and cheetahs just the same thing? Cheetahs are like, I feel smaller and skinnier. So 
do people not wear like jaguar prints like you know no, i think they wear cheetah print i don't know anymore my whole life's been a lie apparently <laughs> so pretty much yeah um proxima stole the show emily blunt was good the rock was good the villains were ass the the adventure was okay and uncharted better be good because we need a damn good adventure movie like the one that's paused on our screen right now the first part of the caribbean which people have compared oh, yeah, jungle cruise to and it's damn really? annoying it's like Weird. people just love to latch on to oh my gosh we have to compare this to indiana jones because it has mm-hmm. an adventure it's like well i guess that's just what people do with the first ever and things right i guess yeah that's all I got for you. If you want to keep, if you want to have more ideas, we can keep going. Or um, all I have left to say to you is that I can't wait for you to be proven wrong with Kate Bishop. I never said I wasn't going to like her. I th- I hope I do. I was just saying right now t- on July thirty first when we're recording this, everyone's like ah, 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 and I'm like, we haven't even seen a trailer. But I can't wait for a trailer. We haven't seen a trailer for No Way Home either, so <laughs> and I'm hype as fuck for it. So I don't know if we're gonna get a trailer for No Way Home, dude. We will. What was our ten dollar bet we made? I don't remember. We made it about Outer Banks too. And we oh, said that, that kiss. Um, Did they ever? No. Oh, Not well. once. So you owe me ten dollars. You want to go double or nothing with the fact that we get a No Way Home trailer? Sure. <laughs> Twenty bucks for me. <laughs> um, we're gonna get a No Way Home trailer. That's unprecedented. We got a trailer for Avengers Endgame. If if any movie wasn't gonna have a trailer, it would be that. There was no need to have one. Yeah. We're getting at least two trailers for this. Do you think No Way Home's gonna get delayed? No, and I don't really even want to dive into the reasoning behind it because I'll just get mad. Okay. But um, no, it's not going to get delayed. And if it does, then I'm just going to show my mouth. Yeah, he's losing. Him. He's <laughs> losing himself in his eyes. Yeah, you can, if you're watching the video version, you can see I, it. I'm just going to chill. <laughs> but uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. I every time I say that, I feel like I'm stealing their outro. Yeah, I know. But should, I don't mean should we to... end it like that? That's what I thought. Yeah, we can end it. Like, that's pretty much it. You said it, and we can just end it. Yeah. Is that fine? It's yeah. a nod to them. Yes. Cool. All right. <laughs> we're ended then. Why are we still talking? I don't know. I just feel like I always have to be on. Oh, no, we're fine. Yeah. We're done. Get up. I can't get up until you get up. <laughs>